Hi, my name's Dan, and this is an overview of the visual theme system in Bookstack. This is a system that allows you to override and customize any view, icon, or bit of translation text that Bookstack uses within its own interface. So you, you know, you can, being able to override those things combined, you can build really powerful uh, customizations to your Bookstack instance where you need to if there isn't available options built into the platform to do what you need to achieve. So what I'm showing here is the documentation for the system and I'll link this within the description to this video. And this will tell you how to get started and how to do each of those actions, but we're gonna run through these steps within this video. Something that I should point out is that while this system of overriding content is supported at some level, the content that you might be overriding specifically isn't deemed to be stable. So changes could occur when you update your books like instance that would then conflict with your um, customizations that you've made. So I'd kind of consider this as a semi-stable system where you might want to check your customizations when you make updates to your book stack instance. Right, let's jump in and get started of doing some customizations. We're going to do a few different bits. I've got my little demo instance here. We're going to tweak this dark mode button here. Mm -hmm. We're gonna update the icon of that and change the text used for this button. Upon this, we're also gonna update this uh, homepage view with some uh, custom welcome text, just uh, for people coming to this instance to show it above these cards and below these buttons. All right, let's get started. I'm gonna switch into Visual Studio Code where I have already opened my uh, Bookstack installation folder. So these are all the uh, standard Bookstack uh, files and folders that you'll have in your Bookstack installation. And then what you'll already have within this is a themes folder. And it will probably be empty if you haven't used this system as of yet, except for maybe a .gitignore, which may be hidden on your system. So within this themes folder, what we need to do is create our own folder for our own theme. So if we create this and we can call it pretty much anything, but we'll just this case, I'm going to call it a custom to represent our custom theme. And then to tell Bookstack to use this theme folder, we need to add a new parameter in our uh, .env configuration file of app theme, and then set that exactly to the name of that folder. So in this case, custom, and then save that. And that will start actively using our theme but of course we've got nothing in there, so it's not actually going to achieve anything. So let's start doing something. Let's start with the icon. So currently we got this little moon and prepared. I've got this different kind of little moon with a little cloud in. So I want to use this icon instead. So what we can do, we need to find where Bookstack is using this icon and then we need to override that. So if we jump back into our files via VS Code, we can see all the existing icons within resources and then icons. So if we expand this out and then look down the list, we can see, here we go, we've got a dark mode.svg. So what we need to do is um, match the name and path of the SVG file within our own themes folder. And take note, all the icons do need to be SVG files. Uh, that's what Bookstack uses for the iconography within the system itself. So let's do that. Let's match the path. So we're going to need an icons folder within our custom theme folder. New folder, icons. And then within that, we're going to just drag in our new icon. And then the name of this and these two match the icon that we want to override. So where that icon is currently called dark mode within our own custom theme folder, we're going to rename this icon to have the exact same name, dark mode. There we go. And then if we jump back into our browser, refresh this, and then we've successfully updated the icon. We've got a little cloud in there now. So that's looking good. Now let's look at tweaking the text of this icon. So it's currently dark mode. We go into here, much like the icons, the language content is within the resources folder as well. 
If we expand that, we see a different folder for every single language. Uh, if we go into EN for English in this case, um, and then what we can do if we just find in folder in here, we search for yeah, dark, and then it'll pop up here where it is. So we found dark mode, that's in the common folder, which is here. And then again, much like the icons, we need to match this path within our own um, within our own theme folder. So this is within a lang en, and then it's called common. So what I'm going to do, I'm actually just going to copy that. I just got to remember lang and then en. So I close this, go to my custom folder. Let's say new folder, lang, and new folder within that as well, en. And then within this, I'm going to paste that common.php, a file that contained our translation. Now that I've pasted that, then essentially all of these are going to be overriding the um, all of these common translation strings. So I found dark mode, and then I'll update this to super dark mode. So let's flip back over to the browser and refresh, see if that's worked. There we go. We've got our button saying super dark mode. Um, but one thing on this, we're not making any changes to any of these bits of text, but we're still overriding them, even though they're the same for now. But that does mean if there's any updates in Bookstack where it changes these bits of text to be more relevant or more correct or to fix grammatic errors, um, we're currently going to be overriding those bits of uh, text with, with what we have in this file. Um, so what we can do, because we only actually want to override this dark mode text, we can select everything else and just get rid of it as long as we keep the structure correct of this file. So we'll just go up to there, get rid of all of those items. And then we've got it just our dark mode overriding string. And then we can jump back into the browser just to make sure we haven't broken anything. Refresh. Yep. So we've still got super dark mode, but nothing else is broken. And that means we're only overriding that specific part of text. Because what Bookstack will do, it'll look for any of your... Um, your own overrides and then merge them with its um, existing kind of English text in this in this uh, instance and then ensure your overrides take priority if they exist. Cool, so we've got a super dark mode button with a custom icon. Now let's add a custom section in here to welcome um, new users to our instance. So it's very similar to what we've just done. If I jump back into my text editor so where we've done uh, the icons and languages within the resources folder, we want to override the views. And that's where they are. They're in resources views. We expand that. And then I know I can find this default home view within views, home, and then default. You might need to do a bit of hunting or a bit of exploration around Bookstack code base to find the exact view that you need, um, but they're generally going to be within this resources views folder. So I know that I want to override this default.blade.php file because it's my homepage content currently. So it's much like the other ones. The only difference is that we don't need to override or we don't need to create a views folder within our theme folder. We just need to match the path below that. So in this case, it will be home and default.blade.php. So if I copy this file, I'll close this, find my custom theme folder, create a new folder within there, that was home, paste in this default.blade.php, and then let's make some customizations to this. So um, let's create a new container element with a bit of vertical padding. Just a nice welcome new users message. Save that, go back to my browser. There we go, welcome new users. So obviously using this system, you could add in your own you know, JavaScript, your own CSS, your own HTML, and it can it's really powerful what you can do to, to make your instance your own. You may be thinking, why don't I just alter that original file instead of copying it into my themes folder? That 
would be altering the core application files. Um, so when you come to make updates, you're going to have a lot of issues if you do that in terms of you know, conflicting changes that you've made and that the books like project might have made. And in addition, it, it means that it might be quite hard to keep track of the changes that you've made or the specific overrides that you're making to your instance. So what it does, by keeping it in your own theme folder, you can keep track of the changes a bit easier and they're gonna apply over any book stack changes. They're not gonna conflict. Um, what you can occur is that if we make some more substantial changes to these views, for example, um, if we change some of the names of the, the files themselves, so your name aren't matching up anymore, then that could cause some issues. So as I said earlier, again, this is deemed semi-stable. I would advise checking your customizations after you update your instance. But I think that is generally a look of everything. So again, I'll put a link to this documentation um, in the description below, and this guides you basically through all the folders and the exact uh, processes of what we just followed. Otherwise, again, sometimes you might have to hunt for stuff. Um, knowledge of the Laravel framework that we're using would help in this instance to navigate your way around. Otherwise, you will just have to hunt for it yourself because uh, this is meant for a more an advanced user customization process. If you ever have issues with your um, instance and you think it could be due to the customizations that you've made what you can do is if you go back to your env file you can simply comment out your app theme variable which will then essentially disable any um, theme overrides so refresh that and then we're back to normal and then we'll just activate that again by uncommenting out that line go back here refresh and our customization customizations have applied and then along the same lines, you could create different folders with different kind of themes if you're testing something out and then swap the value using this app theme. This just has to match the theme folder that you've created. All right, that's everything. I hope this video helps to allow you to make more advanced customizations to your instance and enjoy using the system.